Welcome again to another edition of Late Night Parents. I am Ted Hicks. To my left is Rich Valdez. I'm not going to give you the super excited Teddy Ted today because um, the news is just a little, a little too depressing to even get excited right now. Yeah, it's it's been, a, for the most part, a rather dark week. Yeah, it has. Uh, um, amongst humanity. Yeah, yeah, you just don't understand why people do the things they do in general sometimes. But um, what's come out between the what's being called a terrorist attack in Manhattan, a number of you know innocent, completely innocent people killed there by a madman in a vehicle. And just today, another madman, this time with a gun, and attacking, of course, the most sacred of locations, a church. Right. I don't care what denomination you may be. Correct. Churches are sacred locations. Attacking people in there with a gun and killing 20, I believe the number is now, with an untold number. I'm not sure how many more injured at this point. Right. But it makes no sense at all, you know. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, And, you know, tomorrow or tonight, the cable news channels will start to spin. Or they're spinning already. Okay. They're spinning already. And, as you know, during the week, with the terrorist incident Mm -hmm. in lower Manhattan you know you have the the GOP you know kind of taking pot shots at the the Dems and you know and and I'm guessing um, with tonight and tomorrow and and therefore we start to have that discussion again about um, the ease of being able to purchase a firearm. Mm -hmm. So, but I I just want us to be able to get to the point where when are we going to start to solve some of these problems? You know, let's stop politicizing this type of stuff. You know, it's one thing, you know, it's, you can't politicize or out legislate or legislate out evil. People are going to do if if someone gets it in their head to do something of this magnitude, they're going to find a way to do it. Um, but still, that doesn't answer the question of what do we do. You know, you make something illegal. Okay, well, they're still going to get it. They're just getting it illegally. It doesn't quite make a difference. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, plus we don't know any of the circumstances regarding this specific person in this situation. You know, how they were obtained, if they were obtained legally, if not, background. Um I believe what we have a someone in their mid twenties this time. Mid twenties, white male. So at least we can't pull the race card this time. Either way, right? And but it still should be called domestic terrorism. I'm going to put that out there right now. Haven't heard the word yet. Doesn't and you, matter, and, and you won't. You know, I don't care if, if the person happens to be the same color as. I guess the majority of people, if not all the people in the church in which he went to kill people, it's still domestic terrorism. Call it what it is. So the 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 next spin that I, I saw on TV today um, prior to coming to the studio was, you know, your, your standard um, analyst um, questioning a few people there, mm-hmm. whether it's a, a politician or law enforcement and saying, does your church um, have armed security guards? <laughs> um, maybe. See that? Um, uh, again, that, that's just, I'm sorry, whoever asked that question. That's a stupid question. One, to be asking people in the middle of, of an event like this when the last thing they're thinking of is, do we need armed guards? Right. Uh, and I'll go back to my opening statement. Church is a sacred location. The church shouldn't need an armed guard. No, so you're in a house of worship. Um, it it kind of, I, I was online, as I mentioned prior, and I saw a tweet from a sen- senator in Florida. I won't name him. Mm-hmm. But he goes, you know, our thoughts and prayers are to those that were in Texas. Right. But that's just it. They were praying. Right. <laughs> yeah, how about that? They were. How about that? When it happened. Yep, how about that? They were in worship when it happened. So I guess you start to wonder and you you hope that, you know, we're not seeing what we've already, I guess we're already seeing a trend. But you hope you're not seeing a trend where the madmen out there are saying, 
oh, let me just no, let's all just start targeting churches. Well, you know, we saw that be- I, be- I know. before. The, this, I, I, I realize that. In South you Carolina, know, in, in yes, Charleston. Yep. It's not the first time, and it, it is becoming a pattern. So then, what do you say? Uh, I mean, you know, there's you, you can get multiple arguments on on both sides of the coin. There, you can you can have some that'll say, well, you know what? Again, let people arm themselves to be able to protect, which isn't ne- isn't necessarily the best idea because you know, without training, without being professional, and things like that, given a situation with stress and everything else that's going on, you know, that that could also very easily end up being even worse. I'm I'm, do do? I'm I'm just stuck at the point of where you go to some of these states and buying an assault rifle is like going in and buying a I don't know a basketball or a football. Not that easy, but it's yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's my goodness. Yeah, and then you turn around and say, well, you know, based on our laws. And you you hear these empty, as I said before, thoughts and prayers go out to such and such, such and such. Have they named the weapon? I haven't seen that. They haven't named the weapon yet. Well, not to my knowledge, right. they haven't named the right. weapon. But uh, that's that's kind of where I'm stuck at. We were down in Lower Manhattan during that terrorist event on Halloween. Yep. Um, I don't know. It it just seems like. More and more of this craziness is just being activated one even after the next. And there's no answer. No. But then, you know, with this, with the one, with the one that's been labeled a terrorist attack in Manhattan, what do you do there? Use the car. Right. And, you know, the only reason that it, it, it seems like the only reason the person had what looked to be a weapon, which were just BB guns, as they found out, were just no, in order to get himself killed. Yes. By the police. Yes. So ha- have a gun. You'll get shot at. And at least the uh, officer didn't um, hit lethal position and the person's still alive so they can interrogate and figure right. out what's going on there. Right. That's a good thing, I guess. Um, but like that, maybe that kind of goes back to my other statement. Evil's going to find a way to do evil. That's true. That is true. Uh, this is Late Night Parents, the ways to follow the show, latenightparents.com. We do, as we go through that level of darkness, we segue from that. Um, we want to give a big shout out to amfm247.com. Um, it's a hybrid type station that's um, you know terrestrial and also internet based. They're located in about, I don't know, eight or nine or ten different locations across nice. the U.S. All right. That play our show on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. So, big shout out to Stuart. Thank you, Stuart Venere. Um, I guess we'll go into, did you get the chance to see Thor? No, I didn't. And that that was on my to-do list for today, actually. Okay. But in the the continuing saga of Suffolk County, oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I, I had Painful. more to do with that today. So Painful. that was the first two hours. Actually, the first. I cannot hours. wait until you tell your story <laughs> on that. That was four hours today <sighs> between traveling and speaking with gentlemen. I cannot wait. Yes. That's going to be its own <laughs> show within itself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. We do, it's it's its own show or that's its own podcast. It's its own story. It's its own story to show the level of determination uh, and, that well, and the Richard level of, C. Valdez has. <laughs> no, it's the level of thoroughness <laughs> that Suffolk County has. Because, man, you think I was going to be a police officer. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, I want to do I, – I really want to give a couple of quick shout-outs to our friends – that showed Late Night Parents um, some love this past week. Ah. Start off with um, Moore's Marinade and Sauce. We did a blog that's available on the site. They are sending us some sauce. Nice. Um, I don't know about the size of the care package, but I would definitely split it up. No and problem. 
bring some to work for you, Richie V? I, I will break out the grill in the middle of the winter. Yes, 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 I have definitely. no problem doing that. Definitely. Thank um, you, our our, our you. friends at Charter. Communications? Yes. Oh. Internet service provider, all the above. Um, well, they might be called Spectrum now. Yes. Showed us some love this past week by inviting us to Madison Square Garden. And uh, I will I will echo the thanks of my compatriot here, Ted. You guys at Spectrum, thank you so much. We had a wonderful time, a wonderful evening. You guys pulled out all the stops. Center ice, two rows back. Yes. The sweet. The sweet. The, those chips were awesome. <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. The company was good, too. The company you know, the was good. We were speaking with. Thanks again. It was a good conversation. The alcohol itself was flowing. The beer is good. It was good. It was good. Um, last night, I had the, I guess it was my honor and my privilege. Mm-hmm. I attended the um, Long Island Nets game. Ah, you did. I thought I saw I you did. put I a little attend- post out there. I attended the game. Um, big shout out to Alton Bird, the VP in business development for the Long Island Nets. I paid for my ticket, Richie V. Hey, but you p- did you posted the pricing for the ticket I posted and the parking? The pricing, which was unbelievable. That it, that it kind of makes you think about the days of of way back when you can go to a game. Mm-hmm. And you weren't being turned upside down. And shaken vigorously. <laughs> for every last dime out of your pocket. So the tickets, uh, I took my son, tickets were $15. See, that? that's perfect. Parking was $5. That's the Ford even, parking lot. Even better. See, so you're in the building for 20 bucks. Yes. And then you don't mind as much for... What? The, 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 uh, well... The the quesadilla and the <laughs> bottle of water <laughs> Wait. And, and, and the the fruit punch that was thirty nine dollars. That's right, exactly. <laughs> you don't mind that quite as much because yeah. you got in the door for a fair price. Oh, excuse me, and a pretzel was and a pretzel included for eight dollars. Yes, eight dollar pretzel. That was very hard. Um, <laughs> no, it's the arena is beautiful. Yes, NASA it is. Coliseum or NYC Bank. Live, the arena is beautiful. Um, it was a great night there. Made for the kids, okay. bouncy houses. Oh, and, really? And uh, Xbox and Playstations out okay. there, and all, right. all the above. Okay. So we went, and I just said, you know what? This would be a great evening. Also, along with that, it was so funny because you know I've been talking on and off with the. Um, VP of Business Development, mm-hmm. Elton Bird, mm-hmm. trying to get him to come down to the show. Please, Elton, we are extending the invitation. Please come on down. Correct, and talk with us. correct, correct. So I'm sitting in the second row. Okay. Literally in the second nice. row. Nice. So we're sitting there, and I see someone walk over. And I'm looking, and he's talking to two other gentlemen. Okay. And we kind of. Our eyes connect. Okay. And I was just like, wait a minute. So I stood up. Uh-huh. We shook hands. Uh-huh. Gave my son a fist bump. And uh-huh. we said, we're definitely going to set this thing up. And who was it that you saw? Elton Bird. Oh, okay. <laughs> Elton Bird. But also at the arena was Dr. J, Julius Irvin, who was getting his jersey retired. Nice. Here's where I blew it. Uh-oh. He's where I'm Uh-oh. such a loser. Oh no! No, I am. I am because we're we're cutting out of there right. because I'm thinking about the boxing match with uh, Dante Wilder, and then also the the UFC match that was scheduled to to go on after that because I paid for my subscription. So I'm uh, like, you, you know, get your money's worth. Right, 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 yep. right. Yep. As we're leaving, Doctor J shows up to sign autographs. And since you were only in the second row when you were seated. Well, I had physically left the arena. The door had closed. (laughs) And I said to my son, do you know who that is? He was like, no. I said, there's Dr. J. He was like, okay, because he knows about him through 2K. Okay, right, of course. 
So through the Legends edition. So we missed out on getting signatures from uh. Dr. J. But he's very integral in um, Long Island. He does okay. a lot of work with Roosevelt. Really? Um, connections still to the village of Hempstead. And we eventually we will get Dr. J here. I was about to say. Let's, we let's will get work Dr. on J making here. that happen. Um, the only other thing I want to tell you, share with you about is I have something listed on the brief outline, the Mevo Plus. Yes. You know, I've been I sweating this camera, it. sweating this camera, Rich. I, I you know, I, I read through the, the information about it mm-hmm. again, and this thing looks good. The only, only question I still have. Yes. Is yes. Yes. The external. Which, input connection for which, microphone. Which I sent. Audio, excuse me. A question I sent to online support. Okay. Um, I will tell you this much. Two places that I know of that you can actually see it. You can see it at B&H Photo. Okay. And I went to Best Buy. Oh. Because there are two resellers. So they're selling the camera at Best Buy. I'm not taking right. a pot shot at Best Buy in right. Westbury. So I go in there. I said, where's the cameras? Right. I walk over to the cameras. It's behind, um, you know, a locked case. Of course it is, but and it's I not said, a large device. Well, where's the actual demo camera? Mm. There yeah. is no demo yeah, camera. So I'm one. talking to the young lady, and I said, you have a $499 camera on display that, you're, well, that you want to sell, right. but you don't have anything on display. I'm, you know what? I'm not going to take this shot at Best Buy there. Okay. Only because I'm thinking Mevo is not the largest of companies. Okay. And if they wanted to put a demo unit in every Best Buy mm-hmm. and everywhere else that sells it, mm-hmm. that's a lot of merchandise. Okay. Okay. I, I can kind of see it. I would think, for some reason, I would think you might get a demo unit at B&H. The exact words from the um, the customer service rep was, mm-hmm. go to B&H. Uh-huh. They're privately owned. They'll have it on display. And then I also sent a message to B&H. They also confirmed it. So... So Probably gonna take going. a shot over there. sometime this week. Got to take a shot yeah. so that you can kick the tires on it. Um, you know, use the app, use all the features. Uh, the last thing I want to tell you what I passed up, Rich. This, what did you pass up on Wednesday? I passed up. Some may say opportunity of a lifetime. Uh oh. Um, I passed up on um because I went out Monday night. I went right. out Tuesday night. Yes. Uh, it was also Wednesday night. So Thursday night, I believe I passed up Texas Hold'em. It was a great night of Texas Hold'em, premium cigar, cigars, you know, yeah, good scotch. Good scotch. It was a tournament that was held at the exclusive member-only uh, Grand Havana Room in New York City. Delicious food, you name it, wine, and the tickets were $1,000. So you didn't pass anything up. I didn't pass anything <laughs> up. I didn't you, pass anything you, up. Even though it sounds like that would have been uh, a great night of entertainment. Yeah. And a little bit of gambling and, like you say, the cigars and the food. And the effort was to support the work of the Diabetes Research Institute right. and its search for a biological cure for diabetes did not attend that event, and I heard it was a hellraiser. I I can only imagine. So, I guess you know what. At that point, I'm a loser. No, maybe next year. So, Rich, are millennials spending more time? Is it true? Are millennials spending more time watching uh, content on TV than their uh, other digital platforms? I'm told that is the case. I think I saw the same article. And it's unbelievable because you hear so much about cord cutting, cord cutting. Mm-hmm. There's so much cord cutting going on. But when it comes down to it, the amount of TVs that are out there versus... Sitting in front of a box. Yeah. A, a connected box. A connected box. And viewing their uh, their media. You know, maybe there is still just something about the experience of sitting down to watch TV. It, you know, it's a statement. It's an act. It's something that brings everyone together. Even if you're, I guess, you know, you're the millennials. All right, we're not. We're thinking you're you're done with homework and things like that. You come <laughs> home from work, you you plop down on the couch, and you look at TV. 
Why not? So we're looking right here at minutes spent per platform per month. You can add up so all the other platforms. Let's just lay out the platforms that are specified here. We have regular television, then YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Twitch, Hulu, Amazon, Twitter, and Snapchat. The minutes spent per platform per month for those millennials, that's 18 to 34, TV getting 5,400 minutes worth of viewing. Yeah. TV. TV. The next closest is YouTube with 1,100 minutes. And then it drops off from there. So like you say, you add up all the other ones. And the quick math in my head says you may come up with uh, 3,000. Right. Maybe. Right. So what does that tell you? Is cord cutting overrated? I mean, I mean, if we were if we worked for a, a service provider, we probably w- wouldn't say that would no. be the the situation. But I'm thinking people are still watching television, yep. especially the millennials. Now, of course, you would want you would wonder why you still have the disparity. Is it because the programming that they want to view? isn't as easily accessible in a streaming on demand you know method um is it the experience is it you know when you when you have a couple of people there with you well let's all huddle around this computer screen or you know granted it could still be on the television with your your Netflix or your Roku or whatever you know your Apple TV or whatever and and streaming your media but um maybe there's still just something about let, let's organize and get together and it that Eight o'clock on pick your night. Let's all watch X Y Z show together. Okay, Maybe there's something to that community experience. I would roll with that. I would roll with that because remember, it's hey, you're being told this is when your show is going to be available versus right. hey, this is when you're going to make the show available to yourself. Right. So I still think somewhere down the line that people still enjoy that level of structure. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that don't because, I mean, we're net, net, uh, Netflix subscribers. Yep. But I look at plenty of standard traditional television. Right. Well, is it mainly more because of live sports or you still watch scripted TV? I mean, scripted uh, original programming on, on regular TV. I will still watch scripted original programming on TV. It's not with me. It's not sports. I'm looking at... Uh, Actually, I get more in the, you know, history channels, velocity channels, you know, car TV stuff, of course, news. Um, For me, it's not sports. Okay. I mean, for me, it's primarily with the sports. Mm -hmm. Um, And I kind of flip-flop. So, for me, uh, no different than anyone else. It's it's also a a hybrid where live sports, yes. Watching your favorite shows will be, you know, definitely on the DVR. Right, right. You know, that way you can you could turn that, that hour experience into a 42-minute experience. <laughs> so it's for you, it's because of the commercials. For me, it's because of the commercials. And I think it's baloney when some of these subscribers are telling you now that, hey, you're paying X amount for your cable subscription. But if you pay four dollars more per month, we'll remove the commercials from you. Right. That's baloney. Yes, it is. I agree. You know, I'll that. just continue to hit fast forward. Yeah, that's just you know them just being greedy. Yep. You know, but um, that's our thoughts on whether or not millennials are still watching. I mean, the answer the answer is definitely still there. Um, very shortly, we're going to have um, featured guest of the night, Todd Vandenberg. He's going to join us as we continue to have that discussion about Holly Weird. It's getting more and more weird every, every day, it seems like, especially for the last week or so. Another name comes out as having some interaction that they shouldn't have had with someone, male or female. Yeah. And, and coming out of the woodwork. Holly Weird is a good way to call it. I mean, so does it get to the point where is everyone shaking in their boots? 
It seems like there's a lot of people shaking in their boots. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there are. Uh, you know, I don't. I, I don't know what to say here. Like, again, you know, we've had some of that discussion. There's always been the trope, if you will, of uh, the director's couch. Yeah, the casting but, couch. But the casting yeah. couch, and it was always like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, you go to the casting couch, casting couch ah, ha. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, obviously we're, we're seeing that, that that was actually more in line with what some people thought was uh, standard and correct behavior instead of um, how it really should have been. And it's coming out. And, you know, the only thing that's really striking, and I'm, I'd like to see what uh, what Todd has to say on this, the only thing that seems to be striking is, you know, all the people recently that have been called out, mm-hmm. have you heard any of them deny it? No. It's all been, I'm sorry, I'll go to treatment. I, I'll, I apologize. I apologize. I'll see someone about this. So I think that's the worst part. Only Bruce Ratner. Yeah, what, what, and how many allegations were there against Bruce? Oh, there's, there's, there's many, there's many for him. So you, you really have to sit here and wonder. You're like, what in the world's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I can tell you, for one, this past week when the allegation came out about, you know, you're like, no, not such and such, not Kevin Spacey, Kevin not Spacey. this person. You're like, but, and and I kind of go back to thinking about the Dave Chappelle specials that were just released on on Netflix. Awesome shows. Awesome shows. And what did he say? He was talking about the whole Bill Cosby rape yep. situation. He was like, no, not Bill Cosby. Not Bill Cosby. No pudding. <laughs> he said, Bill Cosby. <laughs> what did he say? He said, Bill, he said, oh, let me get it correct. He said, that's like... Saying Jello pudding like the <laughs> to rape, yeah, yeah, and you're sitting here like, no, this can't be. And then one person after the next, after the next, after the next, and you're like, yes, it's true. And, and again, what gets me is not being denied, not being denied. So, what do you do in that case? I mean, sure, you know, the production companies are cutting ties with these people everywhere, right. You know, so how much money is this costing in you know, those folks in Hollywood? Millions. Millions upon millions. When's it gonna end? I, I don't know if it will. Then there's there's the other part of it, which is and I don't want this to sound how it could come across, it's not meant to. But for everyone who is there are allegations against there also seems to be someone who knew about it and didn't say anything. Oh, and yes, because no, and I'm not I'm not saying you know talking about the victims here. Yeah, I'm talking about everyone else that was involved who didn't say everyone anything. else that was involved in in the situation. They knew it to be true. They never said anything about it, and they made no effort to try to stop it. That's what I think. Also, you wanted to mention, Rich. The fact that, yes, I'm complicit in all of this because I know exactly what's happening. Oh, yeah, that's just this person being how they are. Right, right. Oops, and, me. and, oh, no, that's fine. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, so, you know, sure, many of them, especially, I guess, in that industry, many of them are uh, going to say, and probably accurately, if I'd said something, I would have lost my job. Right. You know that's going to be the response. Of course. And that's a cop and, out. And it's probably true. That's a but, cop out. You know, it is the case of, I guess, if, you know, one person says something, they lose their job. If 20 people say something, then it's like, oh, maybe there's something to this. Right. And no one loses a job except the person who deserves to. So, actress I've always loved, watched her on CBS for, you know, the past seven, eight seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, Juliana Margulies mm-hmm. came out and said <sighs> Harvey Weinstein and there was another person oh Steven Seagal tried to lure her into a hot tub late at night and they told her oh yeah it's part of and that was when she was like a casting director Wait, the two of them together yes. Seagal and Weinstein together right. and she said she was smart enough to get out of there 
see how many stories like this are going to come out. Yes. And and now you just you just pulled another name into the mix. You just pulled another name into the mix. Who's hasn't denied it yet? Right. Who hasn't said anything? Right. I I don't know what to say. Right. And so we sit there and Bruce Ratner and 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 the stuff with Kevin Spacey and the stuff with Kevin Spacey was really quick. Yeah. This well, this was really quick. Everyone started coming out on that so suddenly and all the stories started coming out and then you hear people, you know, allegedly, allegedly uh saying, "Oh yeah, well there were rumors about his behavior and and you know, whether or not whatever his preferences may be have anything to do with it, which I, you know, doubt that in this case. Um he's just Sick. Sick, yeah. What else? What else can you say about it? You know, it would be interesting to get uh, Dave Dean's output on this. Oh, definitely. He, he's been pretty vocal uh, on Facebook uh, about about uh, what's been said and what's been going on about this. So, um, but yeah, but it will be nice once we get our man on here. Oh yeah. So our featured guest of the night, believe it or not, this guy is totally, totally adept, skilled. Because not only does he do Cinema Savants, not only does he do the 12th Man Rising podcast, where he was just live-tweeting the Seahawks and Redskins game, he's also joining us, a friend to the room, none other than my compadre, Todd Vandenberg. Greetings, gents. Hey, Todd, how you doing? Uh, Fine, until I realized it was 7.32, and I was like, oh... (laughs) Stupid Seahawks game running late. Got gotcha. you. My, my, my apologies. No oh, worries. Stop it. No worries. Stop it. We were talking about the discussion for the evening. Holly Weird. Holly Weird is right. Uh, and I, you were the first person I could think of. Oh, I'm very pleased that you think of weirdness and you think of me. That's oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ted, you're the bomb, as always, man. That's, that's just beautiful. That's a beautiful As place. a subject uh, matter expert on... Oh, wait. He's digging, uh, digging a deeper hole here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, a, a subject matter expert on being weird. Okay. A subject being matter weird. expert My man on cinema savants, <laughs> which I listen to religiously. Um, I don't listen to it live, but we listen to it in podcast mode, always. On demand. Weekly, for your listening pleasure. So, Todd, what is your take on, I mean, something you said. I, I And I let Rich know that, yeah, what we thought was just Weinstein has just spiderwebbed across this yeah. industry. And I, and I am very pleased to be on to... Tell Richie that, man, I was really off base on this. He said, when we talked about this, that this could be the uh, tipping point, the stepping stone, the launch pad, whereas a lot of previous things weren't. And, it, boy, it sure looks like it was. And, I, and I'm happy to be wrong in this instance because I'm really happy that, not happy that these things happen, of course, but that people are, are feeling empowered to come forward and say, this SOB did this to me mm-hmm. X number of years ago and everyone needs to know now. So you were right. I bow to your wisdom, sir. No, I, in the, I, in the inverse, I, I wish I was wrong for the same reasons. Yeah. It would be nice if none of this had ever happened, right. obviously, but, 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 uh, but it did. And people finally feel, uh, have the courage to come out and, and name names, which is about time. And it is nicely, uh, of course, in a way that's bad, that it's gone beyond Hollywood because that means it's out there, but we all know it's out there in society. Correct. And it's, it's going worldwide. So it's interesting that if this, if this is catching up in uh, foreign governments, <clears throat> it'd be nice mm-hmm. if it caught on in our government, but you know, maybe that'll happen down the road. Eventually. For now. Yeah. For now, uh, it, it is a good thing that, that people are stepping forward and naming names and, Maybe eventually, um, you know, if they don't get justice, because in some cases that's probably just not going to happen, but at least they can get a sense of closure. Right. And, and you know, just get this off of their, off of their soul. <laughs> Correct. Because it's uh, a pretty awful situation to, to be in for so many of these victims. Hey, I want to throw out a name um, to you gentlemen, to both of you gentlemen, because when this person mentioned something many many moons ago people were like oh this guy's just crazy 
you know, he's a druggie, he's this, he's that. Corey Feldman mm-hmm. mentioned something on The View how many years ago, and Barbara Walters kind of... Kind of shut him down. She kind of shut him down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, didn't he make allegations... And he didn't name names, if I remember correctly. Uh-huh. But he said things that happened and that there's this culture in Hollywood. Right. Um, yeah. He mentioned all these things. And, yes, it was years ago. And like you said, people said, ah, he's the weird one. Eh, we haven't heard anything else. And no, it never really went anywhere that I know of. Uh. Uh, yeah, and, that's the th- and maybe part of that is his fault. Because when you come out and you say, yeah, all this happened, but then you don't name names. Mm-hmm. But you know, and not not no. at all defending him, um, but again, you know, he's a. I, I I don't. I think it's safe to say that he's not a very successful, prominent actor at this time in his career. Correct. Right. And you know, all he's got to do is make an allegation against someone, and his career is shut down for good. So that puts a guy to put him in in kind of a bind. Sure. I mean, you know, in in corporate America. And forgive me if we had this piece of the conversation before. In in corporate America, you know, most businesses above a certain size, you know, the the employees have an HR department to fall back on. Someone that they can trust in going to and, you know, filing a complaint, lodging a complaint, and then some sort of action going going forward and being taken upon that complaint. In that industry, they have no one. Mm. There, there is no HR. There's sure you've got the various unions, you know, who are there to basically make sure people get employed. That's what it boils down to, and you know, some benefit, and, and they would they work for benefits for them. But there's no one to go to to say this person is doing me wrong. And because it is Hollywood, and because you know, sure you have to have some talents to get somewhere, but also it's a lot of who you know to get you in the door to get somewhere. And the names we're, we've been mentioning here, the Ratners, the Weinsteins, um, right. you know, one of these names says, nah, don't work with that person. Right. And you just, your, your entire career is shot forever. So, especially, I, especially Weinstein, obviously. Oh, yeah. And, and that might be, it might be that that's the reason that everything, that this was the, the, the dam burster, the dam breaker, because he's the one who certainly had a tremendous amount of power right. yes. in Hollywood mm-hmm. compared to anybody else that's been named so mm-hmm. far. So uh, that most likely is what opened up the logjam. And yeah, and, and I don't mean to imply that Feldman, obviously he is the alleged victim in this, and you have to say alleged, whatever, yeah. I'm sure he's the victim. Um, you know, it's good that he finally was able to name names. Yeah. Turns out both of them already were convicted child offenders, so isn't that pleasant? How about that? Um, yeah, imagine that happening. And one of them is a fugitive currently, which yes. is that's great. So hopefully they'll be able to track this uh, person down and bring him back to justice again. But it's it's just sickening that we have to have this discussion that this is the situation. I mean, I'm all for the discussion. Don't take it. Mm-hmm. I know you guys don't, but as listeners, don't take it the wrong way. I mean, the fact that this exists at all, that's the sad thing. But the fact that people are coming forward and some of the names that are coming out are uh, kind of astounding. Yeah. Uh, one of the best things that, to me, though, is that a lot of the people who are being accused, they're saying, yes, I did that. Right. Right. They're just, oh, they're just copying to it. And probably they're counting on, if they're thinking about it, oh, statute of limitations is gone on that, so I'm safe. But for the most part, at least they're they're con- they're confessing to it, and that's that has to be has has to at least give their victims some sense of solace. The fact that oh, I'm not the person just blindly you know yelling out this person's name, and even though for decades I couldn't even say it, mm-hmm. you know, for fear of reprisal. Mm-hmm. So that's got to make them feel good. It's like wow, they're not even fighting; they're admitting this. So. We'll see how this continues to play out. It, it, it's hopefully it will continue past Holly Weird and keep on going everywhere it needs to go. Todd, what's your response to Netflix? I guess swiftly cutting ties with 
um, Kevin Spacey and supposedly putting an end to the show or or postponing the show or suspending the show and any other um, projects they have with Spacey, that, that Gore Vidal biopic, none of that stuff is supposedly not getting released. Right, wrong, indifferent? I'm not surprised at all. I mean, they, they axed uh, a Miramax project that they already sunk $40 million into over on Amazon. Uh, that Weinstein is not in, obviously. And it's just because it's his property, they don't want they want to distance themselves from it. Wow. So I can absolutely understand Netflix doing this. And it's like, nope, we don't want any part of this. We want to get out of the, we're connected with an accused, well, in this case, pedophile, because wasn't one of the alleged victims 14. So, you know, they have to. Right. They absolutely have to. Rob and I actually talked about this earlier uh, today on Cinema Savants. Thank you for the earlier plug. Uh, and it, it's up to individuals whether or not you want to, you know, take your copies of the usual suspects out and throw it in the trash. Right. Or if you want to keep on watching it, it doesn't matter. I can totally understand, well, I'm not going to buy it because I'm not, I don't want to support that person's activities. And this is, of course, assuming that he is guilty of, of the charges. Or, you know, you can choose to not care and, and buy their product anyway. That's that's an individual's choice, obviously. Uh, and a lot of people are, they already have it, and they're not going to watch it just because they're angry at that person for what they've done in their personal life. I mean, we've gone through this with, with Woody Allen, obviously, right. it's a different kind of situation, but a lot of people like, nope, I'm not watching Woody Allen anymore because of what happened in his personal life. Uh, but as a company, I, I kind of think they have to. They have to do that. You know, if it turns out that the allegations are false, you know, they can make another deal with him. Uh, I'm sure they can pay him enough money to bring him back. I, I don't think that would be an issue. I, I don't think that's going to happen either. But th they have to do that. And they can write him out of the show. I get it delayed if they have to can the show. Well, that really sucks. And who knows? Maybe they have a morals clause in their contract with him. That right. would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Right. Because that's going to cost Netflix some serious cash because that is still one of their most popular shows. So they can't cow. be too thrilled about the fact that they have to cancel one of their top shows out of nowhere. Yep. Or they don't have to cancel it, but they're, they're considering that. They've delayed it at least. And they're changing certainly the format of the show, the design of the show, one of the things that really makes it work because they're gonna, because Frank's going to be gone one way or the other. Right. So it's been interesting how just how that aspect of it plays out totally aside from the part that's really important as to what will his alleged victims get out of, out of this uh, continuing situation. Something um, that Rich and I were talking about before you joined the show, Todd, we mentioned that all these allegations have been made. There's been no denials. It's just been the words of, I'm sorry, and I'm going to go get help. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty interesting because mm -hmm. Cosby, obviously, uh, fierce denials on that, and it seems kind of silly considering the number of, I mean, what, is he up to, like 7,000 women? It <laughs> seems like that, God. That, 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 that accused him. So kind of seems like the numbers are not in, in his favor on that. No. But, but with Weinstein, and maybe it's just because, you know, Weinstein said, well, I'm going to get help. It was like, well, yeah, you, you, you need help, but you also need to pay some serious money uh, to people whose lives you've, you've ruined. Not that that's going to change things for him, but hopefully that will help them to some extent. And he's got money. Right. So you might as well lose every last nickel of it, you piece of excrement. Anyway, uh, and maybe just because of that, and then they figure and it's like, okay, well, there's no way for me to deny this. Even though there's probably no proof in virtually all of these cases. Right. Which is interesting that it's just mea culpa after mea culpa. So not not that that's a credit to their character, because if they had any character, they wouldn't have done these things. Right. But at, at least that's some small some small measure of, of decency that, that at least they're showing now by just admitting that they're guilt in this. 
Or, or like I said, not necessarily the admission, but they're not fighting the uh, accusation. Right. At the least. Interesting. I don't know. Hey, Todd, as we were, um, you know, as we are doing this live show and at the same time also recording it for the podcast, um, I just got a news, news flash about the the armored clad gunman in Texas yeah. s- said dressed in all black and wearing tactical gear and a ballistics mm-hmm. vest. The shooter mm-hmm. began first firing outside the first Baptist church of Sutherland Springs before he continued his shooting spree inside. Officials said he was armed with a Ruger AR assault type rifle and was eventually found dead after fleeing in a vehicle and exchanging fire with a local citizen, mm, a local citizen, a local citizen. Mm-hmm. At, at what point don't we politicize this stuff and actually start doing something? Do we have yeah. to wait? Do we have to wait until it's election time and vote these clowns out to actually get something done? At, at no point does anything get done. I mean, it's been a while since Sandy Hook, right? Yeah. Why wasn't something done? That's true. It's been a while since Aurora. It's been a while. <laughs> since Name Charleston it. it's, it's been a while and it's always going to be a while uh, President Trump <clears throat> and I use the term president loosely his comment on Twitter may God be with the people of Sutherland Springs Texas the FBI and law enforcement are on the scene I am monitoring the situation from Japan Yeah. okay uh, you are going to change a federal law the day after there was an attack in New York City yes because Seven people were killed. Others were injured. I'm not saying that's not a terrible crime. Obviously it is. But you are going to take action. And by God, we're not going to let another single person into this country who came in on that program, even though this is the first person who murdered anybody who came in on that program. But that one person changes the entire program. Here we are a month since someone decided to kill 58 people in Las Vegas Correct. and shoot dozens and dozens, actually hundreds more. Terrorist. <coughs> and nothing happened, and the bump stocks were back on the market just a few days ago, by the way. Uh, so, really, why was all the big action? You know the big action is? Oh, our thoughts and prayers go out for the victims, and that's the only action that ever happens in this country if the terrorist is white yeah. and Christian. And that's all that ever happens. And sadly, I think that's all that ever is going to happen. Mm. I mean, after Sandy Hook, I, seriously. Seriously. Nothing's going to happen after that, and nothing did. So, eh, you know, who cares? It's just a bunch of Baptists who got shot up in a church. I mean, that appears to be the president's response. That appears to be the Republican Congress response, because what happened after Vegas? Nothing. Yeah, they made some noise. You're they made right. some noise and did nothing. They're not going to do a damn thing after this. They're never going to do a damn thing after after the next one. That's just the reality of that we're living in. I mean, Trump and his followers make a lot of noise about, oh, look how terrible it is overseas, and they have all these terrorists going. It's like, we've got the terrorists here. They're domestic terrorists. But apparently that doesn't connect with their pea-sized brains. And it's okay to have hundreds of people killed every year in this country in mass shootings it's just part of life and we'll just pray for them there there are 33,000 gun deaths a year in the united states but don't talk about guns <laughs> no. there have been 31 cases of voter uh impersonation since 2000 let's talk about 31. voter fraud <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's the real thing there that's this country in a nutshell Greatest yeah. country in the world, I will say. Still say it is. It's it's sickening. And, yeah, you know, I think it is the greatest country in the world. But, boy, it would be better if we fixed a few things, which should really be easy to fix. That's true. I mean, Australia had one issue. This happened one time. Twelve days later, they were buying up hundreds of thousands of guns. Yep. In 12 days. And we just stumble on and keep on praying until the next two dozen or three dozen or five dozen people get murdered because you know 
the, the attorney general of, of Texas apparently made the statement that, well, the way to solve this is to make sure that people go armed to church. Right. Mm. Now, to not, not the right response. No, but it is in Texas. Uh, you know, what's sad is that he was not in that church. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I mean, sure. seriously. If that's your mentality, yeah. pack, pack some heat and go out there and get in your little gunfight and your weird little fantasy and play Marshall Dillon and get gunned down by the guy with AR-15 mm. or whatever he had. Apparently he had deleted the Ruger. You know, it's just, this is not 1957. It's not black and white. It's not. You know, get out of this bizarre gun fantasy that we're living in please, but it's never going to happen. And you know what? Even we can have um, spirited debates and these mm-hmm. conversations, and we'll still see Dana Loesch tomorrow doing a new ad for the NRA. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's kind of where I am. Todd, as always, want to thank you for joining us. Um, this is not the first time or the fifth time or the 15th time <laughs> and definitely won't be the last time. Better not be the last time. Where do we hear Cinema Savants? CinemaSavants.com. By the way, I want to leave on a happy note instead of these wonderful topics we just talked Doom about. Doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's, let's talk about a movie about that is the end of everything. Okay. Rag, Ragnarok or Ragnarok, Ragnarok go see it super fun awesome movie go see yes, that anyway yes. and I know Ted you had said privately that it was better than the first two combined and I totally agree yes awesome uh, fun play so happy note instead of <clears throat> other stuff happy note definitely happy month. Month. Com. that's us cinemasavance.com also 12th Man Rising also the Unreal Todd and we definitely we'll talk offline about Boxing and UFC from from last night. I, I definitely got to get your take on that. But there's a lot going on there too. Yeah, anyway. we'll, we'll do that offline. But as always, thank you for joining us, and we will be speaking with you soon in the future. Awesome, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, Todd. You too. All right. Take care. Always wonderful having the honorable Todd G. Vandenberg. Oh, gotta start thinking about giving him a, a regular spot. Let him I know. Him I know. A Todd, five minute. <laughs> Definitely. Uh we're getting ready to close us on out. We're getting close to it. Um What are we gonna be doing this week? It's gonna be a whole bunch of things. Um I think I'm going to a, a tech conference this week. Which one? The A V I T. Yeah. I think I'm going on the 9th and the 10th. It's local. Where? Local yokel. I think it's Midtown. Oh, nice. I could be wrong, but I'll get you the address and everything else like that. Um, Other than that, as always, um, we want to thank our listeners. We want to thank the folks that download the show, all the above, have left comments for us, and tell us where we mess up on various segments. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank don't, you. Don't mind being corrected. As always, and you can find me as the, on social media as the real Ted Hicks. And I am still Late Night Rich. And we wish you the very best. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks for listening.